Hi, my name is Madeline Geiger and I was the 2016 Miss Whitehall. Hi, I'm Caitlin Paulson and I'm Miss Whitehall 2012. Hi, I'm Trisha Lingen and I'm Miss Whitehall 1988. Hi, I'm Molly Torrison. I was Miss Whitehall for 2015. And I'm Sarah Heggie Torrison and I was Miss Whitehall 1985. Hi, I'm Cerise Staff. I was Miss Whitehall in 1977. I'm Georgia Hughes Sesfold. I was the first Miss Whitehall Harvest Fair Queen in 1955. Well, the first pageant really wasn't a pageant at all. It was in 19, I think it was 56, 55, when Miss Whitehall was Georgia Sessfold at that time, Georgia Hughes. It was a simple little celebration. I don't remember too many things other than that it was held on homecoming week of football. I was about 10 years old then, and I remember that happened at a football game at the halftime. On a football field, no stage, no formals, just a football field. Mm -hmm. It was kind of, it was a thrill. It was a surprise to me when you've got 29 contestants. All of a sudden I heard him say, well, Georgia Sesfeld, please step forward. And I'm not really paying that much attention, but uh, oh me. Yes, it was me. So I had to take the center stage and I was crowned the Harvest Fair Queen. And she, I don't think she was really even called Miss Whitehall originally. It was, the, um, and it wasn't Beef and Dairy Days then. It was the Whitehall Harvest Fair. We didn't have to get up on a stage, you know, and, and give a talk or anything. He was crowned right there on the field with a kind of like a homemade crown. It wasn't like now. And they all had to have formals and walk out on the field. But Georgia was a cheerleader, so she had her cheerleading outfit on. I remember I saw my mother standing right out in front of me up by the fence. I walked over to her and I handed her my flowers and my crown and my sash that I had on. And, but I had another duty to perform. I was a cheerleader, so I couldn't hardly wear my stuff out cheerleading. So it was, it was different, you know. We had a parade on Saturday. My father, he worked at the barn on Fiend Mill and he happened to come over. That's the old matchy machine shop back there where the uh, Rudy's Pontiac is. I don't remember too many other communities around that had, you know, many celebrations that I don't remember if there was other parades or not. That's kind of how it all got started, I think. And I mean, later on, I remember we even had showed our cattle there. 4-H kids would show cattle during the harvest fair. I was just thinking of one thing that was very different when I was Miss Whitehall 33 years ago now to when you were Miss Whitehall is there was a lot more dairy, beef and dairy in Beef and Dairy Days because we used to have cattle shows. You know, we had a lot, you know, we were, we were in the barns, you know, in our sashes and crowns. We were sliding right in there. And so that's how it all started. And later it became Beef and Dairy Days because we had Land O'Lakes in town and also the packing plant. Neither of which is there anymore, but it's still Beef and Dairy Days. My enrollment or my involvement now has, go, has gone since, was it 03? Was that the first one we had when we started? You know, there was a hiatus of 10 years there. And be, earlier on, I was looking at the list, there was a hiatus of a couple of years early on too. They, so it wasn't every year, but they had this 10 year lapse. So many areas have gotten rid of their, their queen pageants thinking it's nothing but a beauty contest or, and it's so, it's not, it's so much more than that. It's such, it's an activity that really you can't get anywhere else in, in, a, in in your community, you know, whatever clubs or organizations or things that you're involved in, it's, it's a unique, very, very unique um, set of things that you take away from it. One of the girls from Whitehall came up to me at the nursing home. They, she was part of the uh, June Dairy Court, June Dairy Month Court, and um, was doing things at the nursing home. And I 
was up there volunteering, I guess, and she asked, how come there's no pageant in Whitehall? I said, you know, I really don't know, but I can check into it for you, because she would like the opportunity to represent Whitehall. So I went to the chairman of the Beef and Dairy Day committee and questioned him about it, never heard anything back that summer until like two weeks before the pageant, or before the Beef and Dairy Day. And uh, he was wondering if I wanted to have a pad, you know, be in charge of a pageant. I said, most definitely, but I need longer than two weeks. So then the next year we started, I'm not sure, probably we got going January, February, early in the year anyway, um, so that we were up and running in plenty of time for Beef and Dairy Days. Yes, I remember um, one of the, the unique things about White House pageant is that it's, it's a full crowd. I mean, people fill up the auditorium to go to the pageant, and that's unique. Um, and a lot of that has to do with all of the people involved in making the pageant very special. It was it was really a thrill just to come back and to be on the stage where you have all these lovely girls in their dresses, and because I didn't have that, but I was just thrilled to be up there with them, you know. And I know that the next Miss Whitehall is going to have memories herself to remember the rest of her life, just as I did. And I'm proud to be a member of this community. So I will say, I'm with the show. Congratulations, girls. And thank you all. We felt that it was important for our community to have a pageant that involved the community, not just the girls. It was more than just the girls. It was to showcase our community, to entertain people, and to introduce them to many things that were going on in our community that they may not be aware of. I believe the first year we had veterans. We um, honored our veterans. So we had veterans escort the girls in, do the bring in the flags, and then we gave a little bit about information about each veteran. Then one year we did um, the ski hill in town, and one year we did things that were good for the environment, like reduce, reuse, recycle, that kind of thing. So we tried to involve our community as much as possible to make them part of the pageant. The committee comes up with a theme that does that. And I think that's a real good idea. That's, lately now, those themes, I think, have been a real strong part of it. Because then they, then they select people to participate from the community. And it's a real co community builder. And honestly, our, this town does a better job with that than, uh, dare I say, some of the larger communities that I've been involved with. Um, it is unique to the area. So it wasn't just the girls walking on stage and doing these kinds of things, but that the girls also learned about the community as well. You know, I think I was a very active in a lot of organizations, you know, in high school, starting my freshman year. You know, my parents were farmers, but they really promoted getting involved, so I was involved in a lot of activities, and this was just one more you know, thing that just sounded a lot of fun to be in, and it was. One of my good friend Kaylee Blaha, she was running for Miss Whitehall because her grandma was the first ever Miss Whitehall. And she asked me to run with her, and I said, no way. <laughs> and <laughs> somehow they introduced money into it and said, just, just come to the meeting. And I'm like, all right, fine, I'll come to the meeting. And that's how I got roped into it. It's a feeling, well, should I or shouldn't I? And, you know, what have you got to lose? It's, it's a good experience, and I'm so happy that I did because I've had many experiences for that year. One of them was my mom. She was a Cranberry Warren's queen um, when she was in high school, um, so I kind of wanted to follow in footsteps. And, um, and then I've always looked up to any of those girls and being the princesses and the big poofy dresses, just like any other small girl that wants to be a princess. Well, I think most, a lot of my friends were running and it was, uh, you know, kind of everyone was just decided to, that was what we were going to try to do and so we, that's what we did. 
So initially I wrote, I was dreading this speech that we had to give. That was the signature Miss Whitehall thing. They walked up and gave a speech and you prayed they made it through. And so I sat down and gathered some thoughts about how I was going to give this speech because I didn't like to talk in public. I didn't like big crowds. Um, but then they introduced the theme of the Olympics and I'm really into the Olympics and I gathered some ideas and put them on paper. Finally I had that memorized and I was like, okay, this might go all right. And the week of the pageant, I went and broke my foot. So I was on the volleyball team at the time and we had two a days. So we were going in the mornings and the afternoons and I think Miss Whitehall practices were in between there or at night. And I broke my foot at practice and I'm like, oh my goodness, we have to do this dance. What am I gonna do? And thankfully they didn't put a cast on me. They let me have a boot because I'm like, I'm in this pageant on Thursday. This was Tuesday. And um, they let me have a walking boot and crutches. And the night of the pageant, I actually didn't feel too terrible. I made it on stage, but um, the dance went pretty poorly. <laughs> they actually, I had been in the front row for part of the dance and they moved me to the back, which I was thankful for because my foot was a little heavy. Um, and by the end of the night, it, um, you have seen the pageant. I, I have a copy on the disc. You can see I'm limping along for the final walk and my mom's like, your leg got so worse throughout the night. And I'm like, I know, <laughs> it was quite embarrassing. For me, I would say there was probably a little less preparation because it wasn't quite as rigorous of an event. Um, we didn't have the judges, you know, the tea situation where you had that social interaction with the judges, yeah. you know. Um, the interview though, that was nerve wracking. You know, that was my first situation of being in a formal interview, let alone with three people. So it was very intimidating, but so that was very yeah, similar. And prepping for the speech, I think, was really similar. We yeah. talked a lot. I mean, she, she wrote her speech, but I was like, well, it's just, you know, talk through it. Yeah, practice, practice, practice. practice. I kind of coached her a little bit on just getting her head straight. So and she did you guys have dance, too? Like, we choreographed no. a dance? We did not. We did not choreograph dance. And I, I want to say there were about 15 of us that ran that year. It was wow. the first time there had been... Um, a new Miss Whitehall pageant for a couple of years. Well, it was a little, um, some questions I needed to ask because I was, didn't grow up in Whitehall. I mean, I went to school in the Whitehall School District the whole time, but yet I didn't have, I didn't live in the city. So I had to make sure I communicated with the committee to make sure that I was eligible to run. So once then, of course, they said they, that was fine. So anyway, so then it, the ball started rolling. I contacted Melinda Goplin, who was my FFA advisor at the time, and she helped me with my interview. Um, I've had some casual interviews, but nothing like Miss Whitehall before. It was a little bit more about myself and not what my job was going to be. So we'd had a lot of dance practices, and since my mom was the choreographer, it was it was fun. And, I mean, she would tease me about things because she's my mom; she can do that. But it was, yeah, I don't. I would think it was, I was more nervous than anything for it, so I'd always just run it through my mind, the entire pageant, and watching it for so many years from like the bottom corner where I was spotlight, I knew how the pageant went, and I knew what was coming up and what was next and what to do. There was a Gilmington parade. Uh, my parents were driving the convertible that day, and they had us all lined up and my dad decided to go get some orange juice or a milk or something and took the keys with him. Well, little did we know we were kind of parked by a fence so others couldn't get around us or through the gate and the parade was starting. Of course, that was before cell phones. <laughs> so we didn't really have an opportunity to get him back in a hurry, although it probably was three minutes, but it seemed like an eternity when you're holding up a parade. Probably any parade that they offered us free food was the best. I mean, everyone had such good food, and they would, Queen's Teas always have good food, and then people come up with ice cream or treats or candy or anything like that, and that was just awesome, too. <laughs> I just thought that it was really fun to get to know all the other girls from all the other different towns. I think that was the, the best part of it all, is just having that experience and 
camaraderie with the other girls that I'd never met before and I probably wouldn't have had that chance anywhere else to meet other girls and um, probably become closer with the girls who are on my court as well. I remember promoting uh, dairy products in June at the old farmer store building, giving out cheese samples and that. That was, that was nice, meeting a lot of people. I think one of my bigger thrills was being in the parade of the dedication of the Mary Sawyer Auditorium in La Crosse. Oh, what a thrill, riding in a convertible with people standing up and above the roofs of the buildings and waving and whistling. I know we did not have a float that year, so there was usually like a, a car provided. Um, I remember one year, one particular parade, and I can't remember which town it was, but the driver, for some reason, the car wasn't there, so I had to sit on top of my boyfriend's orange uh, Mustang, and I had a red dress on. I remember being horrified because I thought I had to look just terrible. How vain, you know, at that age, what you think, <laughs> what your thought process is. But I do remember um, the Arcadia parade in particular because she became Miss Wisconsin. That was at the time when the uh, towns around here were doing that. Like Arcadia now has ceased with that. They don't have a Miss Wisconsin entry anymore. But of course they ended up having two Miss Wisconsins. They were the, the very first one they sent got one, you know, from Jennifer Wojcik. So I remember meeting her and just thinking that was such a cool um, thing for someone local, you know, Arcadia to be represented at the state level. We have had a couple of uh, what, oh, what do you want to call like When they bring all the contestants, but try to get as many contestants back again as we did, we used like a reunion thing. We've had that a few times, and that was nice to see some of the faces. And they remember, they're younger, but they remembered me, and which was nice to know because I know their parents. And some of these girls, I was a Girl Scout leader, so I've had some of these girls in... Girl Scouts, and I had some of them in Sunday school when I teach Sunday school and watching them grow. I remember in Augusta, <laughs> there were these goofy people in, I, it was a costume, I still don't know what kind of animal it was. It looked like a rat dog thing and they wanted a photo with us and Jordan and I were like, no, we're not taking a photo with you, you're terrifying. We were building a float that year but I think it got ready right in time for the next court. <laughs> I don't think we got to be on. So we had um, convertibles. I uh, remember at One Beef and Dairy Days a few years back, there I can't remember the class, but I was down at the uh, chicken stand, gonna eat down there, and here sat a bunch of these girls that I knew, I think they were probably two or three years behind me, and it wasn't long, one of them said that she had a picture back when I was Miss Harvest Fair. I, I've never had a picture. All I ever had was the one clipping from the newspaper there and the picture in that frame right there. Uh, she gave it to one of my neighbors up the street to a fellow in their class and he was just a year behind me and he presented, give me this picture. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. We've had a lot of different people help out with this pageant over the years and couldn't have done it without any of them. But we have one person who be, brings just a wonderfully special gift to these proceedings. And I want to thank him too, Mr. Richard Joseph Stack. <laughs> I'm the piano player. Uh, I play uh, the piano while the contestants are introduced and just kind of give them kind of background. I'm sort of like Muzak for, for the Miss Whitehall pageant, I guess you might say. Richard Staff, who, yes, we're, we're related, and um, he has been just a huge part of that pageant and he shares a passion for it and certainly he's a huge part of the the musical um, part of what makes this community really special. Well I was gone from from Whitehall for about 10 years when I was in college I came back in 73 and I think even that next fall 
they, somebody asked me to play, do some piano playing. I kind of remember that. I think it was Jane Matchy that was crowned that night. And I don't remember, I was kind of, I don't remember the specifics of what I played. I know it was in the old gym, you know, in the, and I had the piano down on the floor. I can kind of see that. But I was kind of involved with every one of them in some ways, because, you know, if they needed a piano player for something, they called on me, because I, I could play the piano. And then from then on, I've been, what I do is play the piano when the girl, it's fun, because I've selected certain kind of romantic kind of music, old old music, I call it, you know, and play quietly when they're introducing themselves and all that, so that it's not just dead, it's dead space kind of thing. Yeah, I think that goes back to my, the speaking skills part of it, because I was just always so, in a shell, I didn't really want to or know how to speak in front of others in a professional manner, I guess. Mm -hmm. It just really helped a lot with getting out of my comfort zone, like I keep saying, but I think that'll help me a lot in my future too, because I'll be a teacher, so I'll be having to speak in front of multiple children, even though they won't be the same age as me, it'll still have a lot of effect on myself and them, so. Being able to talk to any person of any age um, was a big thing. I mean, you had to be able to stand up in front of anyone and not care who's in the audience and just speak. Or handshakes. Handshakes are huge. You've got to be able to have a good handshake. And I think meeting so many people taught me very well how to do that and how to approach or introduce myself. You know, and to go off to college and go into thousands of students that I didn't know who they were and teachers I didn't know and you know step into a whole new world that was unfamiliar and feel more confident about taking that leap not that I wasn't still nervous mind you but you know I really think that I felt more confident in myself because I had already pushed through my comfort zone a little bit and survived and realized you know I can do this I've had former queens, one in particular, came back and said that the interview process that she had through Miss Whitehall was immeasurable when it came to going through some interviews for scholarships and different things when she entered college and beyond. Uh, I also think it helps them learn to get along with people. All of a sudden you're on a court with two other girls and you probably weren't really that good friends to start with. You don't have that much in common. Well, you do because you're from the same town, but it, it teaches the girls that you need to work, you need to cooperate, and you need to get along, and you need to come to a consensus on several different items that come your way throughout the year. people don't realize that you're really the ambassador for your town. You are the representative to your town when you go to other communities. You are the ambassador. There's nobody else there representing your community. It just makes you realize that the community servant is important and it's important and even when you get older, when you're young, and you try to instill that into your kids as well and um, it makes you appreciate the people that are um, putting the events together, whether it be the parade coordinators, the chairpersons of different committees, all the volunteerism that goes on to put on a Beef and Dairy Day event or any event in any other community. It's, it's really astounding how much hours are um, donated to community time. And I know, you know, particularly with my daughter, we made sure that we went to every Queen's Tea that was before you know, every parade. We went to, if there were activities afterwards, we went and ate the vendor food from the local, you know, community sponsors. And we just didn't, you know, hurry up and get in and get out. Um, I think it's important for them to see other local communities support of their activities by the, the, the queens that are there. And not only the floats, but the after activities. So. Um, yeah, I think it's super important to, to be involved in whether you're giving out trophies at an event or handshakes or smiles um, or, you know, the young children that you come across. Um, that's huge. I think taking that responsibility of being Miss Whitehall, representing your community, um, just showing that respect for having that 
that role, that honor. Um, and doing that even when you're not wearing your sash, your crown, you always have to be a good role model, not just for younger children, people younger than you, but for everybody. It just shows them the kind of person you are and shows them the kind of town that you come from. And that's not only for Miss Whitehall, but everyone on the court, Miss Whitehall, the attendants, even Little Miss sometimes, but that can just be taken a little bit more lightheartedly. Light light <laughs> yeah, light light yeah. I, I really think that the pageant and the whole program of Miss Whitehall is my, primarily to represent our community and all what's good about our community. That's why I, I always enjoy the pageant. It's, it's fun to just see the kids and how much fun it is and how exciting they are. But I always come away thinking we have really affirmed our community tonight. I would tell them to do it in a heartbeat. I've had girls from actually last year that had ran and said if they could run again without having to worry about getting a crown or anything, they would do it. They had so much fun preparing for the pageant, learning the dance, working with everyone, that it's fun on its own before you even get the crown. So just do it and have fun. Um, and I know for this court, this past year, I was really close with all of the girls. Um, and when they would reach out to me for help of where can I find a dress, where can I find this or that, I was able to be kind of their go-to person and could find them a dress or could find them their contact information. So I guess it kind of made me, I don't know, uh, honorary committee member maybe? I don't know what to call it, but just help out in any way. And I think that it opened doors for other people to be able to contact me and totally understand that, yeah, I can go to Maddie with anything. Do it for yourself, but also make sure you're doing it for the love of your community. Right. You yeah. should not be in this for you. This is, although there's personal growth to be had, your purpose for this is to represent the community that you love. People who are involved are really, they care about young women. And so that, what I see is how that helps the young women evolve into just more confident young women. And so I think that's really important. My daughter was crowned Miss Richmond in 2002. Following her mother's footsteps. <laughs> and you know, it was funny at the time because I really didn't, you know, push her into, I mean, it wasn't something that I said, oh, you have to do this, I did it. It was a great time. It was something she came home from school one day and had the information and I, I kind of did a little happy dance and said, great, this will be a wonderful experience for you. And knowing my daughter was super shy. She would, she, uh, the first time she was at a, a, a pageant where you had to introduce yourself, she was like, oh mom, I didn't know I'd have to do this. And she trotted up there on stage and told her, and she did it. And after you get over that first stage fright, you know you can do it. You make so many friends doing it too. Even if you don't get on court, you still become friends with all the contestants, closer than you would ever thought, and get to know something different or new that you never knew about them before. It's, it's a very exciting and thrilling experience to go out and meet many people, and I'm sure that if the other contestants that have won will say the same thing, that they've had thrilling times because I have talked to many of them and I've been to many other uh, Beef and Dairy Day coronations, so it is, it's a thrill. It's, they have, everybody has different experiences and it's, it's something you don't forget. I think that cable television is the swellest thing they got.